A V16 engine is a V engine with 16 cylinders. Engines of this number of cylinders are uncommon in automotive use. A V16 engine is perfectly balanced so long as its constituent straight eight banks are balanced, regardless of the V angle. That is to say, it does not require contra-rotating balancing shafts, which are necessary to balance engines with an odd number of cylinders inline or those equipped with counterweighted crankshafts like the 90 degrees V8. In addition, V angles of 45 degrees and 135 degrees give an impulse every 45 degrees, so they are optimal solutions for even firing and non-split bearing crankshaft journals. V16 engines are rarely used in automobiles because V8s or V12s of the same displacement typically produce just as much power and are much less expensive to manufacture and maintain. The few V16s that have been produced were used in high-end luxury and high-performance automobiles due to their smoothness low vibration. Today, the most common applications for V16 engines are railroad locomotives, marine craft, and stationary power generators. Topic: Automotive history. Topic: Consumer automobiles. Howard Marmon had begun working on the world's first automotive V16 engine in 1927, but was unable to complete the production 16 model until 1931. By that time, Cadillac had already introduced their V16, designed by ex-Marmon engineer Owen Knacker. Peerless, too, was developing a V16 with help from another ex-Marmon engineer, James Bohannon. Peerless built one single prototype V16 engine, but ended all automobile production and turned its factory into a brewery when Prohibition was repealed. The Cadillac Series 452 was the most exclusive model of the mark from January 1930 until 1940, with this type of engine. Two varieties were built. From 1930 to 1937, Cadillac used a 452 SID 7.4 L OHV motor with a 45 degrees V for 1938. A new 431 SID 7.1 L design was introduced for the Series 90 with a flathead valve train and an angle of 135 degrees. This resulted in a much lower cowl height. The 431 was in many ways a superior engine, producing as much power as its immediate predecessor while being far less complex, had a stiffer crankshaft which aided durability and smoothness, and even had an external oil filter, a rarity for any car at any price in those days. However, it was never as popular or highly regarded as its 452 SID predecessor. By contrast, the Marmon 16 was a 45 degrees engine made almost entirely of aluminium. Like modern engines, it used pressed steel cylinder liners. Just 400 Marmon 16s were produced between 1931 and 1933. In 1988, a joint business venture between Claudio Zampoli and musician Giorgio Moroder produced the Suzetta Moroder V16T which featured a 16-cylinder engine in a unique configuration, but which was not a true V16. Rather, the engine was made up of two flat-plane V8s, mounted transversely, with gearing between the two providing a single output from the center of the engine assembly to the longitudinal transmission. It began production in 1991 but only a few cars were produced before the company closed its doors for good. Cadillac revived the V16 concept in 2003 with a General Motors concept car, the Cadillac 16. This car used a 1,000 horsepower 750 kilowatts OHV V16. 
BMW also experimented with a V16, eventually showing a 9-liter approximately 550 SID version in the Rolls-Royce 100EX concept car, but it has been changed to a V12 for production due to the customer feedback. However, one of the Rolls-Royce Phantom Coupes which featured in the film Johnny English Reborn is powered by this V16 engine. That was not BMW's first foray into V16. BMW had conceived the Project Goldfish, adding four cylinders to the BMW M70 V12 motor. The BMW Goldfish V16 motor had the displacement of 6.7 liter, 414 SID, putting out about 408 horsepower, 304 kilowatts, and 637 Nm, 470 pound-feet. That motor was also trialed in the new Bentley Mulsanne in the early 1990s. At the same time that BMW was developing its V16, Mercedes-Benz also developed a V16 engine, with 8.0 liters and 530 horsepower. 35 prototypes of the S800 SE, SEL V16 were built. Topic. Racing The first known use of a V16 in auto racing was by Maserati with their 1929 Tipo V4. Harry Miller installed a custom-built V16 that he had built for a Cord supercar he had been working on into a chassis that he had built for the 1931 Indianapolis 500 driven by Shorty Cantlin. The car was competitive, charging from 26th on the grid to 3rd, but was slowed by unreliability, further exacerbated by having to change all 16 spark plugs. Brian Salpau qualified the car 3rd for the 1932 Indianapolis 500, but the car suffered a broken oil line on lap 55 and their race was over. Shortly after the race the V16 was removed and replaced with a conventional Miller four-cylinder. The car was reassembled and rebuilt with an exact replica V16 in 1993. The V16 was used in Grand Prix by the mid-engined auto union racing cars that rivaled the Mercedes from 1933 to 1938. Alfa Romeo made two cars with V16 engine the Tipo 162 135 degrees V16 and Tipo 316 60 degrees V16. The first one was prototype and the 316 was used on 1938 Tripoli Grand Prix. The 135 degrees engine was engineered by Wifredo Reichart and gave 490 bhp 370 kilowatts at 7,800 revolutions per minute. Specific output was said to be 164 bhp 122 kilowatts per liter. It has only been used once in the post-World War II era, by British Racing Motors BRM. Most unusually, this was a 135 degrees V 1.5 L 90.8 CU in supercharged engine. It was a failure despite being powerful. Officially, it produced 550 horsepower 410 kilowatts but probably delivered around 600 horsepower 450 kilowatts. The BRM V16 delivered this power in a narrow, very lofty, RPM range. This made the car difficult to handle, but the sound made by the 16 small cylinders has been described as unforgettable. The problem was caused by the supercharging system adopted. For expediency BRM chose it to be designed by Rolls-Royce, drawing on their experience of centrifugal superchargers for aircraft engines. Centrifugal superchargers are much more efficient than the more conspicuous roots type, but they deliver high pressure only at high RPM. Topic: Other applications. Topic: Marine locomotive diesels. 
Another use for the V16 configuration is in medium-speed diesel engines. Here, manufacturers tend to work with a common cylinder size across a wide range of engines, and size the engine by the number of cylinders for different power requirements. Thus, many users of medium-speed diesel engines such as railroad locomotives use V16 power plants, including most electro-motive diesel and GE transportation systems locomotives. EMD's 16-cylinder two-stroke diesel, with 710 SID per cylinder, hence known as the 16 to 710, can produce over 4,300 horsepower, 3.2 megawatts. Engines such as these are also popular for marine applications and for large emergency generator sets, which frequently use available marine engines, since weight is unimportant. GE's four-stroke V16 diesels, the 7FD series used in marine, locomotive, and stationary applications, have 668 SID per cylinder and can produce over 4,400 horsepower 3.3 megawatts. GE also manufactures the GEVO line of engines. The V16 version, known as the GEVO16, produces over 6000 horsepower, 4.47 megawatts. Some of Vartzilla's marine diesel engines are also available in the V16 configuration. The largest of them, the Vartzilla 46F, produces over 25,700 horsepower, 19.2 megawatts at 600 revolutions per minute. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Aviation In 1904, Léon Lavavasseur, the engineer for the Antoinette engine manufacturer conceptualized a modular engine design that would include a V8 engine, a V16 engine, and a V32 engine. Antoinette built a prototype V16 in 1907, and an aircraft equipped with an Antoinette V16 competed in the 1910 Gordon Bennett Cup at Belmont Park in the United States. Toward the end of World War I, Duesenberg developed a V16 engine for use in aircraft. However, the engine was not tested in an aircraft before the end of the war. In 1939, Chrysler was contracted by the U.S. government to create a new engine for use in fighter aircraft. Chrysler responded by designing an inverted V-16, the IV-2220. They tried many designs before choosing a hemispherical combustion chambered OHV head. The big V16 was rated at 2500 horsepower, 1900 kilowatts. It was finally tested in June 1945. It was installed in the P47 Thunderbolt in place of a radial engine. This airplane was designated the XP47H. The change in engine and aerodynamics increased the top speed from 439 miles per hour, 707 kilometers per hour to 504 miles per hour, 811 kilometers per hour. The war ended shortly after the tests and the Hemi V16 was never mass produced, although the basic design and valve train setup live on in today's Hemi V8s. Four Daimler-Benz DB 602 volt 16s were used to power the famous Hindenburg airship. 